Welcome to Math Methods Lecture 12. This is the third lecture on special functions in which I will be discussing Bessel and Airy functions. Bessel functions are solutions to the following ordinary differential equation, x squared y double prime of x plus x y prime of x plus x squared minus alpha squared y of x is equal to zero. The parameter alpha of this differential equation is related to the order of the Bessel functions. And we distinguish two types of uh, solutions depending on whether the argument x is real or purely imaginary. If x is real, then since this is a second order ordinary differential equation, we need two um, solutions. These uh, are chosen to be denoted by capital J of alpha x and capital Y of alpha x. Y and J are called the, uh, so J is called the uh, Bessel function of the first kind and Y is called the Bessel function of the second kind. These uh, functions uh, are originally defined for real uh, value x, but they can be analytically continued to complex argument. In particular, j alpha of z, where z is uh, in the complex numbers, is an analytic function in the complex numbers, except for a branch point at z is zero if alpha is not in the integers. So for instance, uh, j3 uh, does not have any branch points, but j squared of two would have a branch point at z is zero. By contrast, y alpha of z is analytic in the complex plane, except for branch point at z is zero, regardless of whether alpha is integer or not. For real order alpha, the uh, Bessel functions j alpha and y alpha are also real valued as long as x is in the positive real numbers. In this case, these uh, Bessel functions essentially look like damped sine or cosine functions. For example, uh, J3 has this particular form. It, jars, it starts at zero and then is an oscillating function that is damped as uh, sort of X becomes larger. Bessel functions of the first kind possess a series expansion. It's given as this uh, equation 12.3 in this equation here, where uh, you note that for alpha is not integer, there's a, a term out here that also is a non-integer power of the um, argument z here. The Bessel functions of the second kind are defined by a combination of the Bessel functions of the first kind, given in equation 12.4, as long as alpha is not an integer. So it's a combination of j alpha times the cosine of alpha pi minus j uh, of minus alpha. But of course, if alpha is in the integers, then uh, basically some of these uh, sine and cosine functions uh, will be zero, and that means that, um, in particular, the sine function will be zero, and that means that you cannot use this definition uh, for the uh, Bessel functions of the second kind. So in the special case where alpha is in the integers, one uses a limiting procedure such that y, now argument n, integer order n, is given by this derivative with respect to order of j alpha plus minus one to the power n times the derivative of uh, the uh, Bessel function evaluated at minus n. Bessel functions also possess uh, an integral representation. So here is the uh, somewhat complicated integral representation for the Bessel functions of the first kind. There's a piece that is an integral from zero to pi uh, times a cosine of a sine, and then minus sine of alpha pi over pi times integral uh, over the whole um, uh, real numbers d tau of this exponential function, as long as z is in the uh, complex numbers and positive uh, real part of z. And of course, this uh, integral representation does get simpler if alpha is in the integers, because if alpha is integer, this second piece here is zero, and we only have this first uh, contribution to the integral representation. One can also give a different kind of integral representation for uh, real uh, values of alpha uh, having absolute value uh, less than one. It's given an integral from zero to infinity times the sine of a cosine hyperbolic times a cosine hyperbolic. 
There is also a third type of uh, Bessel functions, um, these so-called Hankel functions, which are denoted H alpha of Z. And these are essentially combinations of uh, J alpha and Y alpha with um, an, a plus or minus um, I for the uh, Y alpha term. Um, so one sort of denotes this uh, functions as H alpha one and two, where the one corresponds to the plus sign and the two corresponds to the minus sign. And sometimes these are also just called Bessel functions of the third kind. One should also note that the Bessel functions of the first, second, and third kind all fulfill the same recurrence relations. So these are given as uh, equation 12.9. So if we have that if Z collectively denotes any one of these um, Bessel functions, J, Y, or H, then Z of order alpha minus one plus Z of order alpha plus one is two alpha over Z, Z of order alpha, or with the corresponding minus sign is equal to two times the derivative with respect to Z uh, of order alpha. For large arguments, the Bessel functions have known asymptotic forms. For real and positive argument, for instance, the Bessel function of the first kind is given as a cosine with a shifted argument and a term that goes like one over the square root of the argument. But it's basically the stamped cosine form that we discussed earlier. And the y function is a damped sine function. Since the Bessel functions of the third kind are linear combinations of these two, one finds that the Hankel functions for large argument are given a stamped uh, exponents of plus or minus i of x and the shifted form um, and a damping coefficient of, again, one over square root of x. There are also known asymptotic forms for the case where the order is large, um, but these will not be discussed in this lecture. Bessel functions uh, fulfill an orthogonality condition. So if we take the integral from zero to infinity, dt over t, and we have two Bessel functions of the first kind with arguments alpha plus 2l plus 1, where l is in the integers, j alpha 2m plus 1, where m is in the integers, then this integral is equal to delta lm over 2 times 2l plus alpha plus 1. There's also a different kind of orthogonality uh, which is given as the following. If we take the integral of dx x of j alpha x times u of alpha n, where u of alpha n is the nth zero of the Bessel function j alpha, then uh, this integral also is equal to delta nm over two times j alpha plus one squared of alpha u n. Note that these uh, roots of the Bessel functions um, for, um, I guess this should be rational alpha, uh, are all transcendental as long as n is bigger than zero. There is also a completeness relation, um, which states that the integral dxx of g alpha of ux, j alpha of vx, is equal to delta function u minus v over u, as long as alpha is bigger than minus one half. Now, since these uh, Bessel functions fulfill basic orthogonality and completeness relations, um, we can sort of use them to sort of uh, basically uh, as basis functions. And in particular, um, if we sort of make the comparison to the completeness and orthogonality of the usual sine and cosine functions, then we can achieve a generalization of the so-called Fourier transforms. Just as a reminder, Fourier transforms are transforms where you take a function f of x, and then you multiply it by e to the minus i k x and take an integral, and you get a Fourier transform function, let's call it f tilde of k. And if you want to get your original function back, um, there's an inverse Fourier transform, which takes this f tilde of k, multiplies with e to the i k x, integrate over k, and bring back the original function f of x. Fourier transforms are useful for a variety of reasons, and we will encounter them in particular in the uh, lecture on Green's functions, but uh, these sort of uh, exact relations are something that is very useful to have. So it turns out that one can define a similar uh, transformation using the um, Bessel functions. And uh, these sort of take the following form. So if we take 
I guess there's a function f of x missing here. If we take an integral dx x j alpha of kx times f of x, which is missing, we define a Bessel transformed or Hunkel transformed uh, function f tilde k. And the inverse uh, Hunkel transform is then uh, given by the following integral here, um, where we sort of take the integral over k and get back f of x. Let me now sort of comment on a few special cases. In particular, Bessel functions of half integer order are also called spherical Bessel functions. So if we take j of half integer order, so if n is an integer and we sort of shift the order by one half, then uh, we denote the corresponding function as square root of 2z over pi times little jn, which is the uh, spherical Bessel function j. And the same for y of n plus one half um, being related to spherical Bessel y. And these spherical Bessel functions uh, j and n can be expressed in terms of elementary functions. So for instance, j0 of z is nothing else but sine of z over z, which is also known as the sinc function. For the special case of uh, order alpha is one third, it turns out that the Bessel functions can be related to the area functions, and that will be something that is discussed below. Let me now discuss the so-called modified Bessel functions. So, so far we discussed the ordinary differential equation in 12.1 with real argument x. However, we can also talk about the case of purely imaginary x, and there are also named solutions for this case. The uh, corresponding solutions are called modified Bessel functions, and they use the same nomenclature that we have modified Bessel functions of the first kind, modified Bessel functions of the second kind, and so on and so forth. Since um, we had the uh, original um, Bessel functions j alpha of uh, z be um, analytic functions in the complex plane, that means that the modified Bessel functions and the usual Bessel functions are related. In particular, j alpha of i x is equal to i times capital I alpha of x, and the capital I alpha of x is uh, the first modified Bessel functions or modified Bessel function of the first kind. Similarly to what we did for the Bessel functions of the second kind, there are also modified Bessel functions of the second kind, and these are denoted as k alpha of x. And k alpha of x is given by a sort of a difference relation i, where i is the modified Bessel functions of the first kind of order minus alpha, minus i of alpha divided by sine of alpha pi, as long as alpha is not in the integers. And whenever alpha is in the integers, we use a limiting procedure to define the Bessel functions k, uh, just as what we did with the um, Bessel functions of the second kind. So the Bessel functions of real argument looked like damped sines and cosines, since the modified Bessel functions are essentially uh, Bessel functions with imaginary argument, we find that the modified Bessel functions look like exponentially growing, like the first kind, or exponentially falling, like the second kind functions. This is borne out in the asymptotic behavior. So for instance, I alpha for large value of x is exponentially growing with a damping factor of square root of x. And um, the uh, modified Bessel functions of the second kind is given as uh, an exponentially damped function e to the minus x, also by square root of um, x. If the argument uh, is complex, um, then uh, there's also an integral relation between the Bessel functions of the first and second kind and the modified Bessel functions, and that's um, Similar, somewhat, somewhat similar to the usual relation sine squared plus cosine squared is one. Here we have j alpha squared of z plus y alpha squared of z is not one, but it's equal to this integral here from zero to infinity of cosine hyperbolic two alpha t times k zero of two z sine hyperbolic of t. There are also integral representations for the modified Bessel functions. For instance, 
here we have the integral representations for the modified Bessel functions of the first kind. It's an integral from zero to pi over some angle theta times e to the plus or minus gives the same result times z cosine of theta and sine square root of two alpha. And the modified Bessel functions of the second kind um, have the following integral representation. It's an integral from one to infinity e to the minus z t times t squared minus one to this power here, alpha minus one half. Finally, let me discuss another uh, set of special functions called the area functions, which are related. The area functions are solutions to the following ordinary differential equations, y double prime of x minus x times y of x is equal to zero. The area functions uh, are denoted as a, i, and b, i, for the two linearly independent solutions of the second order differential equation. Every functions are entire functions in the complex plane. And for real argument, the every functions possess um, integral representations, which take slightly different form depending on whether the argument x is positive, as in this case here, it's an integral over a cosine, or negative, in which case it's an integral um, over a slightly more complicated uh, cosine function. Regardless of the value of x, um, the uh, area functions b i sort of have the following integral representation, which has a piece that's a uh, sine and an integral over an exponential. For real valued arguments, we have the following asymptotic forms for the area functions. We have that area i for large x is uh, basically an exponentially uh, decreasing function, but it's stronger than e to the minus x because it's e to the minus x to the power of three halves. And the area function bi is an exponentially growing function that goes like x e to the x to the three halves. The area functions also fulfill a completeness relation such that the integral over dt of ai of t plus x and ai of t plus y integrates to delta x minus y. And uh, as a sort of a combination of some of these statements before, it turns out that the ARE functions are basically nothing else but a particular Fourier transform. It's a Fourier transform of the function e to the i k cubed over three. So if we do a Fourier transform of e to the i k cubed over three, we get back the ARE function a e of x. If uh, we sort of take uh, the argument x to be real and positive, it turns out we can relate the area functions a i and b i to the modified Bessel functions. a i of x is related to the modified Bessel functions of the second kind with order one third, which is what I alluded to before, of argument two x to the two thirds over three. And b i is related to a combination of the modified Bessel functions of the first kind, i of order one-third and minus one-third, again with the funny um, argument x to the, behaving as x to the two-thirds. By contrast, for negative arguments, um, the relation is such that both a i and b i are related to the uh, ordinary Bessel functions of the first kind j with, with order one-third or minus one-third, um, with a plus or minus sign and a slightly different normalization for the a, i, and b, i's. Finally, let me discuss a physics application for some of these uh, functions, in particular, the modified Bessel functions. The physics application that I wanna discuss is relativistic kinetic theory, where we sort of describe, uh, let's say, a gas of uh, atoms um, moving in a uh, Sort of, a, sort of a thermal uh, ensemble, which is given by a Boltzmann distribution. And this gas of atoms is such that the atoms individually have a mass m, and we want to just uh, cast the local um, energy density and pressure of such a gas. Turns out that the energy density is given as an integral over momenta times the energy of an individual atom times e to the minus e k, the energy of the atom divided or multiplied by beta, the beta is the inverse temperature of the gas in the usual um, Boltzmann kinetic theory setup. 
And because we have a relativistic gas, the um, energy of the atom is uh, squared of the momentum squared plus the mass spread. This momentum integral uh, can be now done in closed form. In particular, if we do the integral over the solid angle, we get a four pi from the solid angle. And we have that epsilon is the integral from zero to infinity dk over, I guess this should be two pi squared times k squared ek e to the minus beta ek. And uh, if we use the variable substitution, k is uh, squared of ek squared minus m squared and plug it in there, we get an integral uh, instead of k over ek. And since um, k was from zero to infinity, but ek uh, starts at m, so we have a change in the integral limits, which now go from m to infinity, and there still, still should be a pi squared, another pi. We do another variable substitution that brings us the m, because we can scale uh, ek as m times a new variable t such that the m to the four is now in front and the integral over t is from one to infinity dt t squared squared of t squared minus one e to the minus beta m t, where again, there's a pi squared, not a pi. And if we compare back to the integral representation of the modified Bessel functions, in particular uh, equation 12.23, we recognize this integral to be nothing else but an integral representation of the modified Bessel functions of the second kind. So then if we sort of split this up and write t squared as t squared minus one plus one, then we have a t squared minus one to some power, in particular three halves, that gives us a modified Bessel function k2. And then we have the one here, which gives us a modified Bessel function of k1. So that's the result of this integration. And there's still this typo that there should be a pi squared, another pi. Turns out we can do a similar calculation for the pressure, it's just a slightly different integral, and we find that the pressure is related to an integral that gives us the modified Bessel function k2. So now that we have the pressure and the energy density, we can define the speed of sound squared, which is just dp by the epsilon. And since both the pressure p and epsilon are given in terms of modified Bessel functions, we can sort of do this um, sort of uh, differential if we in particular use the recurrence relation and we find that the speed of sound squared is given as one over three plus this combination of Bessel K2 and Bessel K3. Now this is for relativistic gas, but we can also use this formula in the non-relativistic limit to get the speed of sound in the air or at least an approximation for that. For this, we need the mass. Um, so if you sort of assume that um, air is really sort of made out of just nitrogen molecules, then we need the mass of a nitrogen molecule and plug it into our formula for M. So we find that M is around 4.65 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. We also need to convert from uh, natural units to SI units. If you sort of take a temperature in a room temperature of about 300 Kelvin, then um, we sort of need to um, sort of take 300 Kelvin and the mass of the nitrogen molecule in this combination beta M and convert from natural to SI units. And we find that with these two inputs, the mass and uh, room temperature of 300 Kelvin, beta M uh, comes out to be about 10 to the 12. 10 to the 12 is a big number. So we have Bessel functions of that number. Um, so since the argument is then very large, we can use asymptotic expansions for the Bessel functions. And we find that the speed of sound squared goes like one over square root beta m times c, where c is the speed of light. So we have the speed of light, three times 10 to the eight meters per second, times one over the square root of beta m, so that is 10 to the minus six. So that's the speed of sound that we get, which is about uh, 300 meters a second. And indeed, um, that is not a bad um, estimate for the speed of sound in air at room temperature. This brings me to my summary. So in this lecture, we have discussed uh, special functions, in particular Bessel functions and Airy functions. We learned that Bessel and Airy functions are analytic in the complex plane, except for single branch points. 
We learned about various integral and series representations for these special functions. We learned that they fulfill various completeness and orthogonality conditions. We learned about Hankel transforms as a special case of integral transforms. And we learned about modified Bessel functions and spherical Bessel functions as special cases of Bessel functions. And finally, we discussed a physics application of modified Bessel functions to kinetic theory. Thank you for your attention.